Hello and welcome to another marvelous video. The ability of Mortal Kombat to create outstanding characters is one of its greatest assets. The massive combat game developed by Ed Boon has always included a wide variety of fighters from various origins, sizes and forms. With Mortal Kombat 11, Netherrealm introduced characters like time-bending bodyguard Gearus, nature-themed goddess Cetrion and evil four-armed minion collector among others to the roster. Most of the time, new characters are effortlessly incorporated into Mortal Kombat's grand universe. However, while Netherrealm has a talent for making its fighters work, those who don't work out are frequently and quickly dumped. The studio's introduction of Kotal Khan the strong Oshtek warrior and emperor of Outworld shows this ability to come up with original ideas. Kotal was another home run for Netherrealm, a godlike Aztec-inspired character poised to challenge the most notorious big boss Shao Kahn in the series. When was he introduced and what is his story? Continue watching this video to find out. Before we go into our explanation, we have a very small request. If you like our content, please support us by subscribing to our channel. This is a small click for you, but for us, it means a lot. Thank you. Let's begin. History of Kotal Khan Kotal Khan Secret Origin Kotal Khan's story was first presented in the Mortal Kombat X comic series, specifically in issue number 6, which served as a prequel to its namesake game. When Kotal served as a general in Shao Kahn's army, he was known for being both a man of honor and a skilled strategist. He met an Adenian woman called Jade while serving, and they fell in love. She ended up being the only woman he ever genuinely loved. Kotal was ultimately betrayed by the Emperor and transported to Shang Tsung's flesh pits to be experimented on. He was held captive there until Shang Tsung was betrayed and killed by Shao Kahn. However, a rejuvenated Sindel murdered Jade before she could rejoin Kotal. Kotal would be affected by this loss for the rest of his life. The people of Kotal Khan once resided in the Oshtek Kingdom. They brought forth a time of peace and prosperity that lasted until Shao Kahn appeared, led by his father Kotal Kets. Kotal Kets finally swore allegiance to Shao Kahn after killing everyone in Oshtek with Goro. The outworld tyrant gave Ketz his portal stone in exchange for his acquiescence, but a young Kotal was incensed at his father's capitulation. Ketz tells his son that he will be able to succeed him as the Oshtek chief once he has successfully completed the realm walk ceremony and endured the harsh circumstances of Earthrealm. Kotal joins Earthrealm after accepting his father's challenge and travels over various landscapes before reaching the Amazon jungle. While the Mayans first dread him because of his resemblance of his own civilization of Oshtek, they eventually revere him after he ruthlessly repels an army of Spanish conquistadors. Kotal stays with the Mayans and aids them in fending off more Spanish raids because he is confident that it is his destiny to preserve and guard the Mayans. The people start to worship him as Buluk, the war god, and copy his propensity for consuming his adversaries' as hearts. Kotal, though, starts starts to miss home and thinks it's time to go back when the Mayans run out of foes to battle. Kotal returns to Oshtek using the portal stone where his horrified father confronts him. Kotal punishes Ketz for harming the Mayans and orders him to return the portal stone, but in a fit of rage, Kotal throws Ketz into a wall. Kotal returns to Earthrealm's Amazon rainforest after deciding he doesn't need his father's throne. But after years of eating human hearts, the Mayans developed a variety of blood disorders orders and started to disappear. Kotal is appalled and retreats in humiliation. Kotal joined Shao Kahn's army as he grew older, eventually rising to the available position. He and Reiko collaborated on multiple missions and he grew to admire his talent. The Emperor gave Kotal the command to assassinate Reptile because of his ongoing inability to overcome the combatants of Earthrealm as he attempted and failed to conquer it. When the Saurian was supposed to be asleep, Kotal did slip inside reptile's chambers with his knife drawn, but he decided not to murder him and fled. Instead, he returned to Shao Kahn and requested to take control of reptile and have him join him. 
Despite his doubts, Shao Kahn accepted and asked Reptile to see Kotal. Following Shao Kahn's demise, Kotal Khan served Melina, who had been appointed the new queen of Outworld by Shao Kahn. But Melina's autocracy was much worse than her father's almost destroying Outworld. Kotal believed Outworld needed new leadership and ran for the emperor, pledging to steer the continent in a different direction. Reptile, Devorah, and finally Ermac soon came to back him. Baraka would die at the hands of Devorah while protecting Melina's authority. But the Tarkatans remained staunchly loyal to Melina. Melina was compelled to live in secret for 10 years when Kotal claimed her Kanum crown. After assuming the throne, he addressed the populace of Outworld and promised to protect the city's walls with his life, inspiring the masses. His first order of business was to make peace with Earthrealm. In the Netherrealm War, he swore to cooperate with Raiden and Earthrealm, hoping that their realms would continue to do so after the conflict. Kotal Khan journeys to the Tarkatan wastelands at some time during his rule and finds the symbiotic pair Fera and Tor being kept hostage by the Tarkatans. After releasing Fera from her cell and releasing Tor from his shackles, Kotal killed the Tarkatans. After selecting the two as his soldiers, Kotal would roast and consume the dead Tarkatans over a fire before departing for Zunkara. Melina eventually joins forces with the Red Dragon in an effort to retake her kingdom. In response, Kotal sends two of his most dependable warriors, Devorah and Eren Black, to Earth Realm to ask the special forces to capture Melina. The three are detained and tied up in an undisclosed complex by Sonia, who continues to harbor hatred for Outworld and mistrust for Kotal. Kotal tries to convince Sonia of his position by highlighting the risks of Melina perhaps recovering her kingdom. The Emperor insists that Outworld's fate will be theirs if Melina succeeds, but Sonia disregards his pleadings and thinks he is threatening Earthrealm. Due to Devorah's attack on Sonia, out of this disrespect, more special forces arrive. Kotal Khan, who is enraged, easily breaks free of his restraints and declares that he has not come for combat, again pleading for cooperation to stop Melina. Kotal charges the special forces men, claiming he is tired of being threatened while ignoring Sonia holding Devorah captive. He pulls his dagger and ignites it with flames. Raiden shows up and commands an end to the fighting before it worsens. Before utilizing the portal stone to return to Earthrealm, Kotal forewarns that it will experience the suffering of Outworld. Kotal snarls back that the Thunder God pledged their realms would cooperate after the Netherrealm War in response to Raiden telling him he promised not to use the stone anymore. Many days later, Kotal tells his stories to an audience in the city of Zunkara, including those of his father Kotal Ketz, Reptile, Devora, and Eren Black. He talks about a decade ago when he pushed Melina underground and removed her as ruler of Outworld, substantially reducing her danger to his dominion. Kotal, who long ago discovered that tiniest risks might cause defeat for even the mightiest warriors, makes a promise to eliminate Melina and her allies as well as anybody else who poses a threat to Outworld. A little later, Kotal Khan appears in front of his people once more to notify them that Goro has vanished while searching for Melina in the Golden Desert. Giving him control of Shao Kahn's Wrath Hammer for the expedition, he asks his father to oversee the search for Goro and Melina. People shout Kotal Khan's name as he leaves, which causes his father to congratulate him for being well-liked by the people. Kotal, on the other hand, is more worried about the commerce channel that Reiko sabotaged and warns that the populace will soon starve. While Melina is not the threat, Ketz reassures Kotal that his family is with him and that he will return her in chains. Kotal exposes their positions and gives Ketz the order to kill both of them saying that history is written in blood. He informs his father of Reiko's brilliance and the threat he poses after courting Melina to become his most trusted advisor. Kotal Khan is later startled and outraged to learn that Goro killed his father, taking him from Reptile, one of Kotal Khan's most ardent followers at the time. Enraged, Kotal pulls out his Kamidogu sword and asks his dead father for forgiveness before slashing the man's chest. He ties his soul to the blood code and acquires blood magic, giving him the power to cripple Goro permanently. You 
producing reptiles cloaking skills, Kotal Khan enters the Golden Desert on his mount while being secretly trailed by his selected troops. Kotal uses his sun god ability to bring down a fierce torrent of solar fire to burn the traitor Rain as he tries to block the sun with storm clouds after seeing Melina's hiding place. Goro makes fun of Kotal by saying that Shao Kahn would have never allowed an Oshtek to rule and Kotal confronts him about his role in Melina's insane regime. After killing every red dragon mercenary in the advancing wave, Kotal dismounts and challenges Goro to a duel. Goro gets furious and throws a fireball at Kotal, calling the emperor a rat catcher and demeaning the honorable Shokan race. Goro stomps down on Kotal's neck and screams that if Shao Kahn hadn't stopped him, he would have destroyed the Oshtek years ago. The Shokan prince mockingly instructs Kotal to die with dignity like his father did as Goro takes him up by his neck and starts strangling the life out of him. Kotal, who is furious, pushes Goro away while retaining the arm of the previous champion. Kotal takes up his sword and slices off Goro's arms one by one, causing the prince to fall to his knees before the Emperor. Kotal then commands Reptile and his soldiers to abandon their disguises and launch an attack killing the remaining red dragons. Goro asks Kotal to kill him and after briefly considering it, Kotal decides not to. Instead, he concludes that leaving Goro in that condition would be much more humiliating. Later, Melina's hiding place is destroyed but Reptile tells Kotal that she and Reiko have managed to flee. Before urging them to return to Zunkara, Kotal assures his supporters that the two can't remain hidden forever. Devora expresses her displeasure at Kotal taking such a chance and Kotal acknowledges that it was excessive given how weak he was after the blood magic. The assailant is then not detected and shoots the emperor from his saddle. Sonia Blade is swiftly identified as the perpetrator. She wants to know where her daughter is accompanied by special forces. Kotal's usage of the Kamidogu leaves him exposed and Devora and Reptile leave to his defense. Johnny Cade steps in and provides the wounded Kotal with medical attention before things can become worse. When Johnny objects, Devora uses worms to eat the bullet in his wound and coagulate a natural substance to close it. Before telling Johnny, who is Raiden's champion, that he would only talk to him, the Emperor praises his devoted soldier. The action hero informs that the Black Dragon has abducted his daughter Cassie and her buddy Jackie. Kotal is offended and explains his recent setback before stating that he would never pay Kano to abduct children. Kotal is able to recall his previous business connections with Kano right away and surmises that this is the source of the special forces claims. After that, Johnny gives Kotal the image of Eren Black and the Emperor tells Kotal that Black is his representative of the Black Dragon. Devora then mentions how frustrated they all felt following their encounter with the special forces and she speculates that Black may be acting on that. Kotal makes it evident that he did not grant Eren Black permission to remove the girls despite Sonia's continued accusations. Kotal informs Sonia and Johnny that Black is now defending the Northern Trade Route and and may be located there, sending Reptile and Devora with them as guides. This information is provided at Sonia's demand. Kotal shakes Johnny's hand to seal their agreement as a mark of good faith. Eren Black kneels in front of Kotal Khan in Zunkara, while the Emperor, surrounded by his hand-picked soldiers, sits on his throne. Kotal considers smashing Black's skull as his punishment for a moment before telling the gunslinger that the Outworld cannot afford another war due to his foolish acts that almost started one. After seeing Sonia Blade and Johnny Cage's sadness over their missing daughter, Kotal asks Black how they plan to make amends to Earthrealm. He then gives the order for Reptile and Devora to bring Eren back to the dungeon. Kotal gets up from his throne and tells the Earth Realmers that Goro and Reiko killed the rest of his people merely to hurt his feelings. He goes on to say that he is the last member of his great race left. Johnny feels for Kotal's loss since the Emperor now realizes that they would stop at nothing to bring their family back. Kotal, who is all too aware of this, gives them his fastest ship and a regiment of his soldiers to 
to transport them to Shang Tsung's island, telling Johnny and Sonia that he would aid them in saving their daughter and that Reiko will be made to pay for his crimes. The prince was returned to his father, King Gorbak of the Shokan, after Goro was defeated before he was given an honorable death after having his arms taken away. When Sonia inquires about the catch, Kotal replies that they must survive the dawn and explains that he had expected Gorbak to uphold Shokan tradition and kill his son for his failure. However, Kotal acknowledges that he was consumed by his wrath and failed to recognize a fundamental truth. All dads love their sons. As a result, Gorbak is seeking retribution for his son's death and the humiliation of serving under an Oshtek. Kotal Khan explains to Sonia Blade and Johnny Cage about his preparations to safeguard the city's food supplies in an effort to starve the Shokan out during their upcoming siege. When Sonia asks how many Shokans Kotal is expecting, the Emperor replies that he is unaware of whether their numbers have increased or decreased. Kotal warns Sonia that if there are that many Shokan, he will challenge their champion personally to settle the dispute in mortal combat. Kotal is informed of the Shokan's coming by Devorah, who then asks Sonia and Johnny to follow her as she goes outside to watch them approach. Kotal acknowledges that there aren't as many Shokans as he had anticipated when Sonia inquires about their numbers, but the Shokan has allied with the Onai warlords. Kotal tells his companions that they need a new strategy after being astonished and scared to witness the enormous hordes coming over the mountains. Devora, Fera, and Tor come up to Kotal Khan, who is watching the Shokan horde. When Devora informs her emperor that they are prepared to negotiate with the Shokan, Kotal sends her a scroll with his demands and instructs her to remain steadfast when delivering them. Reptile tells Kotal that their soldiers will be prepared regardless of the outcome as Devora, Fera, and Tor depart. Kotal then asks about the Earth Realmers, who Reptile claims are helpful. After spotting Kotal in the horde, Kotal says he should have slain Goro, but let his wrath give away to his pride. And now his father is hunting him after he spots King Gorbak among the Shokan. Kotal Khan wonders to himself, how can I halt an unstoppable army as he surveys his Kamidogu on its flaming plinth? Later, Kotal Khan enters the chaotic street combat and uses his sword to partially dismember an Onai warlord in order to save Sonia Blade from it. The Emperor proclaims they both got their sanguine baptism today while assisting her, telling the Colonel he is glad to see her for a change. When Kotal and Sonia see a still alive Johnny Cage racing towards them with the Shokan hot on his heels, Kotal promises to help her rescue her daughter and get revenge. Sonia claims that all her men are dead and believes that Johnny Cage is among the missing. Kotal Khan personally duels King Gorbak in the last hours of the Shokan siege, but his performance is terrible. The Shokan king dominates their contest and mocks Kotal, saying he lacks expertise and that his empire is slipping through his fingers. Gorbak kicks the Oshtek down and declares the end of the Khan period today, despite Kotal's attempt to reason with him by pointing to him that his son was Reiko's puppet and that they have always been comrades. Further into the city, Kotal and Gorbak continue their combat, and Gorbak eventually traps Kotal against a wall, thrusting Kotal's blade into his shoulder. Kotal asks Gorbak the issue he had been considering earlier as Gorbak sneers in victory. How can you halt an unstoppable army? Kotal abruptly grabs Gorbak by the skull, ripping off a portion of his face as he responds, destroy the head the same way you would the undead. Kotal then stomps Gorbak's head between his fists. Kotal screams out to the Shokan hordes and tosses Gorbak's body in front of them, telling them to salute their monarch as the Shokan's decapitated corpse spouts blood. As a result, the Shokan and Onai warlords flee, giving Kotal Khan the advantage for the time being. Kotal says the Shokan will return tomorrow, and if they are to win this battle, he is prepared to sacrifice much more. Devora approaches him carrying a wounded reptile and claims the Emperor almost sacrificed himself again to secure victory. Kotal informs Devora that he intends to deploy more blood magic and that tomorrow's triumph must be gained via violence before directing the transportation of Reptile to the hospital. No further challenges will be heard, according to Kotal, who also vows to defend the capital no matter what. Instead of letting Devora protect him, Kotal commands her to carry out his vow and bring the Earth Realmers to Shang Tsung's island 
so they may find their daughter and kill Reiko. Kotal is furious that his Kamidogu is gone when he returns to his palace rooms as he suspects Devora of taking it. Kotal releases Devora after choking her with one hand as she claims to be innocent. Resigned, Kotal rejects Devora's promises to assist him in locating the dagger and says Zunkara is doomed since he can feel his connection to its power eroding. When Kotal Khan goes to the demolished platform where he had promised the citizens he would protect them, he is reminded of his pledge, considers himself unfit to lead because he couldn't defend the capital and accepts that his fate is to die. Reptile explains how he joined Kotal and adds that the night before he joined his side, he was always aware that Kotal was waiting for him in his quarters to murder him. When Reptile inquires as to why he spared him, Kotal responds that excellent spies are delicate instruments and are not intended to be used as mortal combatants. Reptile attempts to convince Kotal of his own worth, but Kotal interrupts and tries to flee. Farah remembers how Kotal first protected her and Tor from Tarkatans before enlisting their help. Farah continues the narrative despite Kotal's attempts to stop her. When Devora asks what happened to the stabby men, Kotal responds, dinner, with a chuckle. However, his pleasure is short-lived since he commands them to abandon him to his fate if they are genuinely devoted. When Reptile attempts to object, Kotal yells that they did not oppose Shao Kahn as he marched to his death and demanded the same respect. This prompts Devora to reveal her own motivations for supporting Kotal so steadfastly. She claims that she never respected Shao Kahn after he conquered her realm, but that Kotal's instilling respect rather than fear in his subjects was what convinced her to side with him. Kotal, despite being moved, claims that his sacrifice tomorrow will save hundreds of lives and calls it acting respectfully. Then Kotal Khan tells his soldiers that his father would be proud of them for fighting like Oshtek. When a tremendous earthquake suddenly strikes the capital, Kotal initially thinks it is the Onai warlords. Still, he quickly realizes that Kano and his fellow black dragons claiming to be the cavalry are to blame. The following day, when Kintaro returns with the warlord horde, Kotal Khan rides out on his mount, the black dragon clan trailing behind him and declares that his empire will not be conquered. Kotal Khan and Kano had previously agreed with Kano's assistance in overcoming the Shokan and Onai warlord hordes. Before the two sides can engage in combat, Kotal commands his side to hold and cries out to Kintaro challenging the tiger to a match of mortal combat to put an honorable stop to the dispute. Kintaro, however, declines. Kano describes earthquakes as an inaccurate weapon and introduces a brand new product with destructive accuracy. When Kano uses the gadget to cause a massive explosion that kills half of Kintaro's army, Kotal is startled and demands to know what sorcery Kano employed. Kotal thanks Kano and inquires as to why Tremor abruptly halted. Kano responds that it was science. When Kano reminds him that the Shokan never submit and challenges the next course of action, Kotal orders Kano to execute the Shokan if they do not offer submission. Kotal discovers Kintaro in the rubble of his army and demands his surrender while holding his blade to the Shokan champion's neck. Kotal is not surprised when Kintaro fiercely rejects and wants to be completed. Despite appearing to agree, Kotal sheathes his blade and ignores Kintaro's fury in order to explain that Shokan were not his enemy enemies until Goro entered into a pact with Reiko and Melina. Kotal also acknowledges that he has always appreciated the courage of his people. Kotal calls out to the Shokan, informs them that Reiko and Melina are their enemies and begs them to work together to eliminate them. Kotal Khan extends a hand to Kintaro and warns the arrogant tiger that he would never order him to submit, instead he will call him to fight. Both sides applaud as the Shokan uprising concludes. Kintaro takes his hand to signify their agreement. Then, with Devora, Fera, and Tor by his side, Kotal meets with Kano and his black dragon troops. Kano wants payment in money, but Kotal responds that he already owed him a debt when he jeopardized the strategic alliance with Earthrealm and as a result, he owes him nothing. Kotal grunts in response when Kano claims that the Emperor will be ready with the Black Dragon, despite his belief that the Shokan will turn on Kotal once more. When Kano remarks,
remarks that nuclear weapons are expensive, Kotal responds that second chances are also costly and makes it quite evident that he owes the Black Dragon nothing. As Kano prepares to ransom the portal stone, Kotal notices that it has been taken from his domain and bursts into a rage. Kotal jumps across the room to attack Kano and breaks his arm to retrieve the stone. Tremor gets restrained by Sonia Blade while he tries to save his commander. Before ordering Devorah to transport Kano and his clan to safe rooms in the dungeon, Kotal tells Kano that the Black Dragon are not his allies and owes him a due that has been paid. Kotal does this while placing his foot on Kano's throat. After Devora, Ferra, and Tor steal the Black Dragon, Sonia inquires as to whether Kotal intends to put them to death. The Emperor replies that Kano must account for his crimes committed outside his realm and informs Sonia that he plans to hand him up to her after her daughter is saved. Kotal informs Sonia and Johnny that the ship is being prepared and they will set sail that evening. He then reveals that he will join them in overcoming Reiko and the Red Dragon and Sonia concurs. When Kotal Khan sees Sonia and Johnny standing by one of the containers, he orders his slaves to start loading supplies and weaponry aboard the ship that would take him, Sonia and Johnny to Shang Tsung's island. He calls out to them and inquires with the colonel about any issues. Kotal offers to show the two to their shipboard cabins after Sonia dismisses any problems. Kotal Khan calls Sonia Blade and Johnny Cage to him as the ship reaches Shang Tsung's island and informs them that they will dock at dawn since the jungles of the island's shore are too challenging to go through at night. Johnny and Sonia are escorted onto the shore by Kotal Khan, followed by Devora and a group of his warriors. Kotal informs the former general that his war is with him and asks to know why he wants to engage in additional warfare with Earthrealm when Reiko and his supporters attack them. The girls are then seen under Reiko's control via the Blood Code before he unveils his ambitions to unite Earthrealm and Outworld under his rule. On the shore of Shang Tsung's island, Kotal Khan and his troops clash with Reiko, with the conflict beginning with the girls attacking Cassie's parents. With Devora by his side, Kotal slaughters Red Dragon soldiers with ease, slicing them in half with his blade and even tearing out one of their hearts while making fun of Reiko for depending on them to carry out his wars. Even though Reiko praises Kotal's abilities, he makes fun of him by joking that his father would be unhappy to see him fail and saying how pleased Shao Kahn would be to see him destroyed. Kotal is enraged and informs Devora that Reiko is his, whereas the Khitan decided to concentrate on Scarlet. Kotal charges at Reiko while holding his blade backward, reminding the general how he had always desired the Khan's might. Reiko breaks Kotal's sword with a single strike while reminding Kotal that he lacks the ambition for genuine holiness. He is able to deflect Kotal's swing and is unperturbed by his kick. Kotal is knocked flat on his back by Reiko's upper cut and the Emperor is briefly trapped down. Reiko grabs Devora and tears her in two as she tries to join her Emperor's side. The Oshtek Emperor rises once again as Reiko gives Kotal the choice to surrender and serve him, drawing strength from the sun and warning Reiko that he could have taken his family, blood magic and allies. Even yet, he cannot steal the sun from him without Melina's assistance in Eden. In response to the passing of one of his most dedicated supporters, Kotal is clearly inconsolable. Kotal Khan reopens the the combat with Reiko while brandishing one of his sickles, but as soon as it starts, both warriors sense and hear a powerful earthquake shaking the island. As he watches Melina rush to the shore with her legions of Tarkatans following, Kotal curses everyone. At the same time, Reiko beams with delight as he notices a second ship arriving alongside his own. While Kotal and Reiko are still engaged in combat, Kotal mockingly quotes an Earth Realmer who says, Hell hath no fury like a woman scorned. After both of them see Melina beat Scarlet, Reiko redoubles his assault and brutally beats Kotal Khan into submission before Melina and Ermac step in to save the Emperor. Ermac explains that although Reiko is currently dead, the blood code will soon bring him back to life. Kotal remains silent as Melina presses her side to his throat before deciding to hold off on killing Kotal until they have completed Reiko. Kotal Khan reluctantly stands with Melina, sword drawn, and watches as the blood code revives Reiko. Kotal Khan acknowledges 
acknowledges that while the strength of the Blood Code is inspirational, it has limitations and repercussions that if they push Reiko too far, the power will consume his soul. Kotal emphasizes that they must kill and keep murdering him when Melina asks how to push him. Melina is more than willing to join the fight, but Reiko renews his assault with blood magic blasts and even throws Ermac in their direction before slicing both of them with Kotal's stolen Kamidogu. Kotal is not very pleased when Reiko talks about the purported prophecy that a goddess of a society he destroyed had made, according to which Reiko will rule. Kotal acknowledges that while it may be true that Reiko's blood will rule, it must first flow. Kotal Khan rips off Reiko's legs with a sword that has been ignited in flames by the sun. Melina then uses one of her side to dismember the general and Ermac telekinetically takes off the general's head, murdering Reiko a second time. When Havoc announces his presence, Kotal calls the Chaos Cleric and tells him that the game is over. However, Havoc has revealed his secret weapon, a Raiden who has been infected with the Blood Code and is raining down blood-red lightning on everyone on the island island, including Kotal. Raiden's lightning knocks Kotal Khan out, and the red dragons gather his body and bring it to the island's royal room. Kotal's blood is taken there and used in the ceremony which would elevate Reiko to godhood. While this is happening, Kotal Khan is awake and witnesses the general transform into the blood god by drinking blood from a cup and being stabbed by six Kamidogu. Reiko, ecstatic about his newfound godhood, considers sacrificing Kotal Khan and Melina to himself Self because they refuse to acknowledge his greatness. However, Havoc steps in and suggests that they be publicly killed instead, saving them from this horrifying destiny. Kotal Khan would subsequently observe Havoc rip Shinnok's amulet from Reiko's corpse, showing the general to have been nothing more than the Chaos Cleric's pawn. Reiko would later sacrifice both Kotal Khan's and Melina's men to himself, but shortly after, his body started to shred itself apart. The Chaos Cleric returns after dealing with Queen Shiva's ship. As Kotal observes, Havoc tests Shinnok's amulet on several spies from the Shokan tribe. Havoc then stands over Kotal while holding one of the Komidogu. Havoc complains to Kotal about how he used his words and the general's ego and desire to deceive Reiko into being his slave rather than becoming his master via the use of magic. Before reminding Kotal that history is influenced by greater forces, the largest of which he claims to be chaos, Havoc rants about how all champions suffer from the illusion that strong people like them can shape history. As Havoc uses the Kamidogu to stab the Emperor, he tells Kotal that they thought they could establish order after Shinnok was vanquished. However, now they will realize that order cannot overcome chaos and neither can Kotal. Kotal is released from his restraints, his tribal markings and eyes shining a blood crimson color, and his will has been subjugated to Havoc's. The Chaos Cleric has the hand holding the amulet severed by Takeda Takahashi, who has arrived with a serrated set of whips as his new weapons. Kotal declares that Chaos has no emperor as he watches Havoc prepare to drain Ermac of his souls in order to empower the amulet so it can destroy Raiden's cosmic barriers, separating Ermac Earth realm from the nether realm. Following Takeda's destruction of the possessed Cassie Cage and Jackie Briggs, the Blood Code corrupted Kotal joins the all-out assault on the young Shirai Ryu, striking the youngster with a hard elbow to the back and reprimanding him for being overconfident in his ability to kill rookies. When his own outworld soldiers show up, Kotal Khan watches as Havoc beats Takeda with Shinnok's amulet. Havoc greets them via Kotal and the Emperor engages in combat with Fera, Tor and Devon all at once, cutting Tor with his sword and striking Devorah in the jaw. Despite Devorah's cries for help, the possessed Kotal Khan keeps up the fight. Eventually, the depraved Emperor puts Kaiten against the wall while holding her blade to her throat. Kotal is freed from the blood code and Havoc's grip before he can kill her. Kotal is shocked to be in this situation and demands to know what has transpired. Kotal stands close to Reptile and Devorah as the warriors gather before speaking 
speaking with Raiden. Kotal apologizes for interrupting Sonia Blade while talking to her daughter and says that they need to discuss inter-realm issues. Although Sonia is quick to point out that the rescuers include the person who kidnapped her daughter, Kotal informs Sonia that Aaron Black's shock therapy is adequate punishment for his acts and that if the gunslinger makes it back to Outworld alive, he deserves a second chance. While Sonia is irritated, Raiden quickly questions how Havoc and Reiko had the personnel to carry out their plans as Kotal bows before her and asks if she agrees. Following Raiden's revelation to Sonia of his and Kotal's negotiations of an agreement between their worlds, Kotal Khan tells the Thunder deity of Dagon of his Red Dragon Clan's participation and says there will be only an agreement if she approves. The prospect of an alliance with Outworld disturbs Sonia, but Kotal clarifies that it would be a non-aggression contract that would leave any cooperation up to their mutual discretion. Kotal shakes hands with Sonia to signify the agreement and vows to return the weapon of mass destruction he took from Kano. Kotal Khan declines the offer to look after Shinnok's amulet when Raiden gives it to the two and asks one of them to protect it since he knows Melina has already left, the Outworld Civil War will restart and the amulet won't be secure in his custody. I will never forget those who freed Melina. Mortal Kombat X The next part of Kotal Khan's story was shown in the Mortal Kombat X game. Kotal assists Melina as one of her advisors following the passing of Shao Kahn. He makes plans to depose her from the throne with Reptile. Melina and her supporters accost them as they persuade Devora to participate in their coup. Reptile then reveals that Melina is not Shao Kahn's biological daughter, but a Shang Tsung's created genetic experiment in response to his claim that she is jeopardizing their kingdom. Kotal tells her they must join forces with Earth Realm to fight the Nether Realm, but she is unwilling to make amends with the people who killed her father. Melina, furious, orders her Tarkatan army to assault, but Ermac quickly turns against the Empress and defeats them, allowing Kotal and his friends to capture the Empress. It is announced that Kotal is the next Emperor. After five years, Kotal Khan travels through Zunkara with Devora and Kano, ignorant that Melina had paid Kano to kill him. They talk about how to use Kano's resources to put an end to the rebellion. When Devora departs to examine the Emperor's carriage after Melina's soldiers have blocked it off, Melina's forces launch an assault. Kano takes out his knife and tries to assassinate the Emperor as Kotal tries to figure out what is happening. There is a conflict and Kotal Khan wins. Tanya, who is working for Melina in exchange for Edinia's freedom, stops Khan from killing him even though she is also defeated. Kotal Khan teleports to Melina and Rain after seeing them on the rooftops killing a number of Tarkatans before throwing the rebel leader to the ground. Before being thrown from the roof by the Adinian half-god, Kotal briefly discusses their respective claims of godhood with Rain. The two then engage in combat on the street. After defeating Rain, Kotal Khan prepares to have Eren Black put to death, but Melina intervenes and the Emperor is then engaged in combat. Kotal triumphs and is ready to kill her with solar flames. Rain teleports Melina away as she collapses to the ground after stopping his onslaught with Shinnok's amulet. Melina's sudden strength, which resulted in the deaths of numerous of his troops in the reaction, astounded Kotal. After Kung Jin releases a bread thief who has been given the death penalty, Kotal confronts Cassie Cage and her group. They tell him about the refugees from the Outworld living in Earth Realm. Kotal Khan is enraged to learn that Melina took Shinnok's amulet while it was meant to be under Earth Realm's protection, since he believes the team to be Melina's allies. The amulet is the only thing Kung Jin squad is looking for, so he tries to convince him of this. Insisting that Kung Jin and his companions are allies of Melina, Kotal Khan refuses to accept him before putting all four of them to death. Kung Jin challenges the Emperor to a battle to defend his right to self-defense. Kotal Khan, who has been defeated, requests that Kung Jin kill him. However, the Shaolin spares the Emperor and requests his assistance in finding the amulet. Kotal Khan agrees with Kung Jin despite Devora's objections and the two shake hands. As Devora and Cassie infiltrate the rebel camp to get the amulet, the team and Kotal Khan's troop raid the Kwatan jungle after learning of Melina's position 
by Akeno. Tanya, Rain, and Melina assault Devora and Cassie, but Devora knocks them down cold. Captured and taken before the Emperor, Melina is told that she is undeserving of death at his hands. Kotal Khan refuses to take any more chances by entrusting Earthrealm with the amulet as Cassie and her crew get ready to leave with it. He begs Devora to keep the amulet while he imprisons them. In return, he permits Devora to release her flesh-eating parasites, which eat Melina's face and internal organs to death. Devora, on the other hand, is really a double agent working for Quan Chi, whose objective is to get the amulet and release Shinnok from his captivity. After escaping from prison, the crew defeats Ermac, Reptile, and Eren Black. As they awaken, Kotal Khan's supporters warn him of Devora's betrayal, which makes him sad. They are led to think that Devora is Raiden's ally and that she was the one who saved Cassie's crew. Kotal Khan responds by getting his army ready to attack Earthrealm and see the amulet. When Kotal Khan and his army finally make it to the Earth Realm, they come upon Cassie's crew while they are traveling to the Sky Temple. Kotal's army pursues them at his command until they reach the woods where they are ambushed. Takeda, who is unsuccessfully attempting to inform the Emperor about Shinnok, is fought by Kotal Khan. Then Jackie intervenes and reports to Kotal Khan that Shinnok has the amulet and has contaminated Earth Realm's life force. Kotal intends to kill the team to appease Shinnok so he may strengthen Outworld's defenses before the fallen elder god comes for his realm, after realizing that Jackie is speaking the truth and that Earth Realm is doomed. Despite defeating him, Jackie and her companions are surrounded by his troops. However, Lin Kuei attacks them and Sub Zero allows the group to run to the Sky Temple. Sub Zero and his Lin Kuei soldiers were able to drive Kotal Khan and his men back to Outworld. Mortal Kombat 11 the story of Kotal Khan concludes in the video game Mortal Kombat 11. We see Kotal Khan as the Khan of the Outworld in this timeline, starting his effort to reunite the realm of the Outworld by wiping out any evidence of Shao Kahn's history. Just as Kronika sends a time display Shao Kahn and others to the Colosseum, he is about to witness Collector's execution. He is taken aback to see Jade, but Shao Kahn challenges him to a duel and demands his kingdom back. After Raiden determines it's best to assist Kotal in maintaining control of his domain, the dictator overwhelms Kotal, but Liu Kang saves him. After that, a time-displaced Baraka challenges Kotal to a duel, during which Kotal declares his wish to see the Tarkatans vanquished. After Kotal overcomes him, a youthful Scarlet drags him into the Beast Pens, where he defeats her. Jaden soon enters and the two kiss, while Kotal describes how he was released from the flesh pits after Shang Tsung's demise. A younger Black then appears, and Kotal sends Jade to aid the Earth Realmers while he defeats Black. At some point, Kotal Khan opposes his former boss and triumphs. After Devora helps him, Shao Kahn's army is beaten and the dictator flees. Kotal informs Raiden that he and Kotal joined forces to combat Shinnok after being astonished to meet him. But after winning, Raiden became evil and attacked every place he perceived as a threat. To fight Kronika and Shao Kahn, Raiden and Kotal Khan team up. Kotal sets off with Jade and his escorts to locate the Tarkatan refugee camp to apprehend Shao Kahn, since he knows he will return to restore his reign. Devora ambushes them en route, but is unsuccessful. When they untimely reach the Turkatan camp, Jade advises that they sneak into the base with a couple of his strongest soldiers. He accepts and lends her many soldiers, but they become compromised once they encounter a female Turkatan. Although Kotal comes to her help, he is determined to kill every Turkatan. Before he could endanger their security, Jade overcomes him in combat because she is dismayed by his hardened heart. He is then kidnapped and transported to the Colosseum for death. Kotal sees his error and asks Jade if she would still want him despite his hardened heart, which she accepts while she heals his wounds. Kotal chooses to hand up the kingdom to Kitana once Shao Kahn is vanquished, since she has more successfully unified Outworld than he ever could. Kotal was transported 
to the Soul Chamber to mend his wounds after his terrible battle with Shao Kahn. Sindel's recovery was halted when Shang Tsung, Nightwolf, Fu Jin, and Shiva showed up at the Soul Chamber to turn him back into a revenant. Kotal had recovered sufficiently to be able to walk once more, but he lacked the power to prevent the party from putting Sindel within the chamber, and Shiva was able to beat him in combat. In contrast to the main narrative, Kotal is seen to have recovered enough to take part in the assault on Kronika Citadel. While traveling, Sindel led Shokan troops and a revived Shao Kahn assaulted the ship and Kotal was aboard. Kotal tried to halt the two with Jade, but they were quickly overcome. After defeating Kung Lao, Liu Kang and Kitana, Shao Kahn and Sindel won Kitana's outworld army over them. Kotal was then executed. What makes Kotal Khan so deadly? Kotal Khan is an Oshtek, a creature with superhuman strength that enables him to wield his enormous Makwa wit with a single hand and easily break a grown man's skull into fragments of bone and blood. As an Oshtek, he can pull energy from the sun to fortify himself, heal his wounds and utilize it to directly injure adversaries with solar fire beams or even endow his weapons with more damaging energy. He may also transform into a black jaguar in Mortal Kombat 11 while still sporting his headgear, allowing him to attack opponents at will. Kotal Khan is also capable of using telekinesis, but since he is only able to confine individuals as opposed to other wielders like Ermac, his power is not as strong. He may use Outworld's Kamidogu to call upon blood magic to fortify himself and his inherent resistance to sunlight. He was able to physically overpower and chop off Goro's arms while in his blood god condition by commanding a powerful beam of sun fire through storm clouds sent by the Adinian deity Rain. Humans from Earth Realm have equated his might to that of a god. Kotal Khan may also utilize blood magic to enhance himself by extracting blood from himself or an opponent, as well as to heal himself by ingesting the blood of an opponent. In keeping with his Aztec and Mayan style, Kotal possesses the capability to call forth totems that provide him an advantage in combat. These totems can be employed as power sources to increase his damage output and decrease his damage. Kotal possesses a totem that can utilize blood that has been spilled on it to heal him. As seen by his fatal blow, the aforementioned totems may be deployed as makeshift weapons. He has physical weakness and is unable to summon the power of sunshine like other Oshtek. Although this is not a gameplay feature, Kotal Khan is also capable of teleporting in a flash of smoke and fire. He has four sets of fatalities. From Mortal Kombat X, he has Be Mine. Kotal Khan yells, Be Mine, as he pulls out a knife and carves open his opponent's chest before forcing his hand through their ribcage. He then tears out his adversary's heart, smashes it, and raises it high over his head as they fall. Tight Squeeze In this move, the opponent is given a bear hug by Kotal Khan, who then starts to forcefully squeeze their body, causing their brain to explode and their internal organs to shoot out. The squeezing causes the corpse to collapse after that. From Mortal Kombat 11, he has Totem Sacrifice. Behind his adversary, Kotal Khan conjures a torso-shaped altar and he kicks them into it. He calls up a totem in the form of a skull above the altar and lowers it over the victim's head, smashing it and hurling one eyeball in the spectator's direction. He severs his opponent's skull and spine with two more kicks. Cat Food Kotal Khan uses his sickles to cut open his opponent's chest, exposing their heart and lungs. After changing into a black jaguar, he charges at his prey, severing their throat, ripping out their heart, and crushing it between his jaws. Apart from this, he has many brutalities, signature moves, and finishers. <laughs> Marvelous Verdict Kotal Khan has enormous physical power and a perfect physique, but he isn't quite as skilled with magic. He is a powerful combatant anyway, since he can also withstand a high amount of assault. But his capability to lead is where he excels. He is one of Outworld's greatest commanders and an extraordinarily capable Khan. 
Kotal Khan seems to be one of the few good and bad characters in Mortal Kombat that really wants true peace, desiring nothing more than for his people to flourish and live in peace. If you enjoyed watching this video, click the like button, share this video with your buddies and drop a comment about which character you want us to explore next. See you guys in the next one and if you liked our content, don't forget to leave a like and subscribe to us if you haven't already. Have a good one and be safe. Thanks everyone. Put the amulet back where it belongs. <gasps> the hell are you doing?